Uh, my name's Tom Pura, and uh, I'm from Leroy, Illinois. I'm 53 years old, and I'm running for an open uh, Senate seat in the newly drawn 51st Senate District. You know, I, I think the, the tipping point on me deciding to get involved was the great frustration that I have and that, that I'm hearing from people across the, the state. Um, I mean, this, this business where we're now dead last, dead last in states with regards to a, a budget deficit, that's an embarrassment. You know, I have uh, I have four children. We have three 15-year-olds. They're they're uh, sophomores in high school. Two boys and a girl, and uh, they're out for all of the sports and the activities. I have a 10-year-old son as well, and uh, my children literally are the reason I, I get up in the morning. I've been married to my wife for over 20 years, and uh, um, I think it'd be fair to say in our our life uh, revolves around our children. My dad was a true small town general practitioner and many times I traveled with him in his car to make house calls for patients in the evening and my dad was a great man. Um, he, he really cared for his patients and, and I learned a lot from him. He came from Lithuania. My dad was a uh, uh, in a concentration camp and uh, he escaped during the war as he was being transported in a, in a cattle car with a bunch of other uh, camp detainees and he escaped by being thrown out of this cattle car when an individual put their hands down and he stepped into those hands and he was flipped out the top of that cattle car and he escaped into the woods. My father was very proud to be living in America and he always told me how lucky we were to be living in America, a free country. It was a very proud thing for him. A after my dad died, I, 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 was, uh, I was 15 years old and I was almost like a ship without a rudder. And uh, uh, Jim McLaughlin, a local farmer, had been one of my father's best friends, and I think he, he saw that. I worked that farm uh, from the time I was 15 until the time I was 25, and uh, um, I think you learn a lot of things uh, in, a, in a farm life that uh, you certainly miss out on uh, growing up in a big city. You learn hard work and, and uh, uh, long hours uh, won't kill anybody. Jim McLaughlin always told me, Tommy, you, you need to invest in farmland. They're not making it anymore. Right now, I own some of the best, flattest, blackest farmland in the country. It's right here in McLean County and, and DeWitt County. Um, it's, a, it's an investment that isn't flashy. It's not fancy. It's not a derivative or anything else that a, a Wall Street executive sells. It's plain Jane and I'm real glad right now that I've got it. It's not a good thing when you've got Chicago politicians trying to tell farmers how to farm, enacting laws that are basically trying to tell a farmer how to do his job. My dad always told me to be a good doctor, you gotta understand the law. And um, when I went to medical school, I always remembered that. And after medical school, I decided to enter law school. I used my law education um, in the healthcare field virtually every day. And I represent a lot of clients in the healthcare uh, industry. In 1929, the last physician was first elected to office. And I think a physician has inside knowledge that just isn't existent in, in our state today from a political standpoint. We know the problems with health care. We deal with them on a daily basis. I think my perspective as a physician, and especially knowing and dealing with the state Medicaid program, 
be very helpful. Over the past 25 years, I've seen many problems with our state Medicaid healthcare system. I have seen single mothers with young children who were in dire need of health care but couldn't get it. Couldn't get it because of the problems in the way the system is set up. And that's a tragedy. It's a real tragedy. At the same time, I've seen abuses of the system. Abuses that have caused the state millions and millions of unnecessary dollars. I, I jumped into becoming a small business owner in 1998 when I developed my first uh, freestanding healthcare facility. And what I know is it's a challenge to be a small business owner. We have a state that's unfriendly to small business. It's unfriendly through taxation. It's unfriendly through the laws, through our tort laws. We need to create a state that is business friendly. The state's in a, in a dire situation right now. And it's, it's almost as if we continue to squabble um, so we can continue to squabble. And people are tired of it. I have no desire to be a career politician and will not be a career politician. What I believe is we need term limits. We need limits both at the state and federal level. And, and by that I mean if you can't do what you need to do in two full terms, then you need to step aside. You need to let somebody else have a shot at trying to improve the state. As a physician and an attorney, I, I could live anywhere in the United States. I've traveled all over the world. I, I live in a small town because I choose to live in a small town. I, what I like about small towns is everybody knows everybody. People are protective of each other. Um, it's a great place to bring up a family. I, I'm, I'm uh, admittedly a, a, an environmentalist or a big conservationist. We've, we've planted uh, over 350,000 hardwood trees. I love the outdoors and uh, my family and uh, my wife and, and kids, we spend a lot of time outdoors. We, we hunt and we fish and uh, we ride horses and uh, certainly in the summertime, we're, we're outdoors a lot more than we're ever indoors. I, I'm a big advocate for the Second Amendment, and I'm not a Johnny-come-lately on this issue. I have been a life member of the National Rifle Association since I was 18 years old. That's more than 35 years. And I, and I think that it's important to know that Illinois is the last state that does not have a concealed carry law that allows a law-abiding citizen to carry a concealed weapon. Our, our state is bankrupt. We're fiscally bankrupt, and I believe we're morally and ethically bankrupt as a state. And uh, our state does not have a problem caused by lack of taxation of the, its citizens. What we have is a problem with excess spending. They have lost sight of the fact that it's our money, the people's money, that they're spending. And it's not their money. We need to rein in this spending. We need to control it. That might mean not buying something or not authorizing uh, a new social program. You know, a lot of people are down on our state right now. And uh, maybe I'm a contrarian, but I think now is the time to be very optimistic. I, I think that now people have finally come to the realization that they have to get involved. And I'm getting involved. I think more people ought to get involved. And we need to take back our state. I'm optimistic. I, I really am optimistic about our state. But it's going to take common people from across the state to do something that they've never done before.